Hey everyone, um, you didn't get two intros from me uh, because this is future me talking to you guys. Uh, the rest of this video was filmed a couple of weeks ago and you're probably wondering why I've been away or haven't uploaded for a couple of weeks. Uh, well, I've got some side projects that I need to take care of and also uh, I've got some equipment issues. I mean, I feel like I say that in every single video now, but um, the dedicated Astro camera Altair Astro 26C, which I love using, is currently out of commission. Um, I'll have more details on what's going on with the camera once I hear back from Altair Astro. Um, but I just want to say that, you know, equipment will eventually fail and it's really important that the manufacturer stand by their products. And this is what Altair Astro has done. Uh, they've made the experience extremely positive really enjoyable and ultimately they stand by their products and they will make sure that you know the customers will get the proper response which is what i'm getting so i'm super thankful for that um, but in the meantime this current video may be the last time you guys see the alter astro 26c being featured at least for a foreseeable future uh, moving forward i'll be going back to my canon 60d dslr um, so I hope you guys will like more DSLR astrophotography because you're going to be getting that for a while now. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the video. See you guys. Bye. All right. Um, I'm shivering because it's actually getting chilly out here which is a great sign because that means that fall is ending and winter is coming. And, you know, you've probably heard me say this many times, but winter is some of my favorite uh, time of the year because a lot of the uh, nebulae, some of my favorite nebulae are only available during the winter. And I'm super excited for them, super excited about those long cold nights. Um, but because fall is ending, I have to say goodbye to one of my favorite targets that is extremely difficult for me to capture from my backyard. Um, because, you know, trying to capture a broadband target from my Bordo 9 white zone backyard um, is extremely difficult. And no matter what I do out here, I don't think my image will ever, ever compare to uh, an image taken from a truly dark sky, at least when it comes to broadband images. Um, but, you know, if I don't try, then I'm not going to have an image. So, Bordo 9 or not, White Zone or not, and because this target is quickly fading, and I think I have maybe until 2 a.m. before it sets behind the rooftop of my house, I'm going to try my best to image the Andromeda Galaxy and I'm going to be using uh, the brand new William Optics Red Cat 71. Uh, I am looking forward to this. Um, Kitty, don't fail me now. Oh, and also, um, now that I've done the introductory, uh, introductory video on the Red Cat 71, I will forever refer to this telescope as the Kitty 71. Deal with it. So um, I actually don't have a whole lot of imaging time in my backyard because I'm 
surrounded by a lot of uh, obstructions, as you can see. I've got a ton of trees behind me, a ton of, a ton of bushes, and uh, I've also got the rooftop of my house, which you can't see right now, but um, trust me, it's there. Um, so I really have to plan ahead and make sure that I can maximize the amount of imaging time that I get. Now, I also say this, I'm never ever going to cut down trees to increase my view just so I can get a few more hours of imaging time. Um, these trees were here before me and these trees will be here after me. They've done nothing wrong. I'm never going to cut them down just because I want some more imaging time. I also want to mention um, that when you guys are out there imaging, um, really observe your immediate environment because as you can see, I've got the rooftop of my house and I've got this giant tree over here. Um, now behind me is basically north. So, and we're right now in the beginning of, of uh, November and this tree, that's basically in the direction of uh, northeast. And guess what? That's actually where Cassiopeia is for most of the night. So that means I'm not gonna be able to image cast anything within Cassiopeia for a while. And I've also got uh, houses and other trees blocking uh, the winter circle. So the winter circle won't be available to me until maybe late November at the earliest. So I really got to you know plan ahead and pick my target because a lot of things are still unavailable to me. And that's why uh, tonight, capturing the quickly fading Andromeda galaxy makes a lot more sense because I don't have I don't have a whole lot of options right now just very quickly about the um, the Kitty 71's helical focuser now this is the original the same design as the original 51 um, and William Optics decided to retain the helical form factor. Now, uh, let me just start by saying that this is a great focuser. It is smooth, precise, accurate, and robust. I personally just don't like the form factor of a helical focuser where it sort of makes me rest my hand on the telescope to find focus, especially once it's mounted onto my mount and it's balanced and, re and it's ready to go. Um, now I spoke to William about this and the reason why they retained this design is because a lot of people actually use these uh, uh, Red Cat Space Cat 51 and this new 71 for bird photography and various other forms of telephoto photography. So it makes sense to retain this helical focuser for that dual purpose. I'm just saying for astrophotography, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, but the good thing is, you know, you find focus once in the beginning of the night and you should be good to go. You should be good to go for the rest of the night. And uh, once again, this is a smooth and great and easy to use focuser. I'm just not a big fan of the form factor, that's all. Okay, so I am getting ready to slew to Andromeda and actually use plate solving to add tonight's data to uh, pre-existing data that I've acquired maybe a, a night or maybe two nights ago um, because I want to build on top of the data and get a cleaner image. And you know, because as I mentioned earlier that I live in Bordeaux 9, basically a white zone, um, broadband targets are extremely difficult for me uh, to obtain because, well, when you image broadband under Bordeaux 9 skies, you're also imaging a whole lot of light pollution despite me using a, uh, a pretty decent light pollution filter, uh, the Optolong L Pro. Um, but having said all that, honestly, in order for me to have a decent enough of an image, I need at least, I wanna say five hours, six hours of data for a decent broadband target. So that is why I need to um, build on top of pre-existing data uh, for one final image. Um, and now I wanna talk about a little bit why I think the Kitty 71, just like the original 51, is such a great target, especially 
uh, when we have uh, winter coming right along because you know I will show you um, on my imaging laptop how I'm gonna plan the night um, and you'll see that you know the the reach of the 71 is actually quite perfect for something like the Andromeda Galaxy um, now I have this um, I have the 71 matched well I shouldn't use the word match but I have it attached to my Altair Astro 26C which is a APS-C sensor size so um, I get a pretty wide feel from the sensor and honestly this 348 350 millimeters as you can see um, that you know through Stellarium it frames up Andromeda really nicely and now uh, let me try rotating this so uh, yeah so I guess uh, like I said before like it doesn't fill the frame entirely from edge to edge but uh, I kind of like that I like having some you know empty space in, uh, around the image or or you know in between the stars to give me a better perspective of how far away these objects are and how massive they are so hopefully that makes sense um, it could be just a, a personal preference thing but you know the Red Cat 71 with this this very forgiving and sort of really still wide feel uh, focal length of about 350 millimeters um, it's just a great scope to use during the winter with all these larger nebulae coming up and also because of the, uh, of the Petzfeld design <laughs> another joy when using either the original 51 and this brand new 71 is that um, you don't have to worry about back focus and I don't know about you guys I am horrible at reaching back focus um, I'm just not great at it and the fact that I don't have to worry about that and just attach my favorite camera either the Altair Astro 26C's or, or my DSLR uh, Canon 60D is just so easy to use um, as a matter of fact you know because I don't have to deal with back focus on the Red Cat 71 imaging with a dedicated astro camera sort of feels like imaging with a common DSLR because it's that easy to set up So I'm going to talk while this thing slews to Andromeda and I'm going to talk about the plan for tonight. Um, what I think I want to do, well, yeah, what I know I'm going to do is that I am going to start capturing data as early as I can. Uh, I'm just checking what time is it right now. It's a little bit past 8 p.m. Um, I think I have maybe... I think I have maybe two hours uh, before I have to do my Meridian flip and then once after that once it flips over I think I'm gonna have another maybe two to three hours until Andromeda disappears from the roof of my house so I think I'm gonna get a pretty decent at least four hours of, uh, of data tonight um, and add that onto my existing batch of data and hopefully that will be enough for a decent enough of an image um, if not, then I'll try to throw in another night. But, um, but tonight's plan is start now, uh, come back out for the Meridian flip in about two hours, and then let it go until Andromeda disappears from the rooftop of my house. So it's about, it's almost 10.30 at night right now and I came out here to check on my imaging session and I almost freaked out earlier um, have you guys ever set up walked inside be comfortable and then suddenly realize that you never press start well that's happened to me before and I thought this was happening to me tonight so um, an hour 
into my dinner, I came back out to just to make sure that I did indeed press start. And thankfully I did. Um, but I, I, I freaked out a little bit. And uh, the reason for that is because I really, really desperately need, desperately need tonight to work. Um, some of you may know, but over the past couple of months, um, it's been kind of rough. I've I've damaged two imaging laptop. One was my one's one was my own fault, where I sort of knocked down my laptop. The other one. Um, Recently, I got a mini PC and that mini PC just died. So <laughs> within the past couple of months, I've lost so much data because uh, my own fault that I didn't transfer the, uh, the file and the data uh, as regularly as I should have right after the uh, imaging, imaging session. But also within the last month, the month of October, um, I realized that my camera sensor, the Altair Astro 26C, uh, the glass on top of the sensor had a lot of dust on it, so I decided to clean it. Um, what I didn't realize was that you know the fact of me cleaning it meant that I couldn't really combine the two uh, the two sets of data before cleaning and after cleaning because the flats had different spots in them. And when I try to combine the flats, um, I mean, uh, when I try to combine the data between before cleaning and after cleaning, uh, they were just a big mess. And I, <laughs> and I couldn't use anything that I capture before I clean the sensor. So if I'm, if I'm being honest with you, this is easily my 20th hour trying to image the Andromeda Galaxy. So you can understand why I really need tonight to work. So the fact that I came back out here and I realized that, oh, I did indeed press start on my session. That was a massive relief. So hopefully the rest of the night will continue on smoothly. Uh, I'm probably about half an hour away from my Meridian flip. And uh, I will be keeping a keen eye on the actual flip, you know, making sure that nothing goes wrong. And hopefully, uh, I'll be able to show you guys a good picture with the KD61 and Andromeda. And with that being said, uh, I wish you all good health and clear skies.